All right, folks, welcome to Philadelphia. As you can see, uh, maybe part of it, the Flyers logo behind us. Uh, even though it's basketball, we got the hockey because it was the option was the Flyers logo or the Sixers logo. We didn't want to give any credit to the competition. So even though I'm not really into this, we'll go with the hockey. Well, and this, this might be the, the, the opponent for the Sabres coming up in the postseason there you as well. Go. So, there you go, Sabres I mean, fan. Well, hey, and, and, and there's got to be a lot of Sabres fans in, in, the, in southern Ontario now. Bury that I, knife in the Leaf fans. Right? Eh? Well, no, but bury that knife in the Leaf fans. It's the, 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 the close proximity right, now. Right. You might as well just become a Sabres fan by proxy now. If, if you, know, you, you don't want to get behind, you can't get behind the Habs, right? And of course, in Ontario, don't, don't, don't we all hate Western Canada? We were supposed to not like Vancouver. Don't worry, I still like you, Vancouver, because we're still drumming up interest. That's right. That's right. We want a team there. VancouverNBA.org, the Vancouver Yetis. We're trying to get them going. Well, let's let's talk about the two teams going at it. Do we have to? Actually, go? actually, no. You know what? Let's not. Let's talk about the draft a little bit because oh. we keep getting the messages on yeah, Twitter. Yeah. Hey, who do you guys like in the draft, um, folks? It's not that easy because you're the same ones that are going to say, and we say, well, you know what, pick this guy. Well, you shouldn't have picked him. And then all the, the, the look, if you're going to do this properly, you consider the body of work over the course of the season. You look at how the guys played in the tournament. But what's more important is I think you've got to look at character. And that's what you find out after the season, what a kid's work ethic is like. You take him out to dinner. You see how he handles himself, himself around other people the training staff, the equipment managers, the secretaries. What kind of a person do you have? Because I think that's a huge, huge part of it right now. It's not just that easy, oh yeah, I'll pick this guy. Plus, the other thing is, we're hearing a lot of these guys with the imminent lockout, it looks like imminent lockout, and the labor situation they'd be, a lot of them are going back to school to have a place to play. Now, Kyrie Irving has come out, and we were talking about this on the plane, Eric. His college career consists of 11. Yep. Count them, 11 games, and then he's going pro. Basically, folks, you're getting a high school kid if you pick him. Now, that said, and I 100% agree with Jonesy, you, Jonesy, me, anybody else, including general managers, really can't say who they take in the draft right now because it depends. Are you saying who should be number one right now as of April 8th? Okay, as of April 8th, I would say the guy I would probably go with would be Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving. Okay? I'd say on April 8th. But Kyrie Irving might not impress in workouts. Kyrie Irving might end up blowing out his knee or something. I don't know. So I'm just saying as of April 8th, that's who I'd go with. But the other thing as well, Jonesy, is it's unfair to ask anybody, you, me, yourself, Brian Colangelo, another GM of, say, you know, in Cleveland or whoever, you can't ask them, who are you going to take in the draft? Because you don't know where you're selecting. The Raptors might be second, they might be fifth, they might be fourth, they might be third. So you don't know at this point. It's all going to depend on, okay, well, who's on the board? Have I made any other moves? You know, does that mean that there's a different spot on Much my too. roster that's a, a available that, that I need to fill? Am I going after the best player? Who has declared? Who has since gone back to school? There are so many intangibles that it's not a cop-out to say, I don't know and nor do you. There's nobody that can give you a legit answer. Even Brian Colangelo, who's sitting here right, right here right now, could not say, here's who we're going to draft. Because he doesn't know because the guy that he wants to draft might be gone by the time he actually selects. Well, and that's the other thing too. Or the guy he wants today might not be the same guy that he wants on June 23rd. Sometimes, so nobody can give you that answer. Yeah, it's, absolutely. Sometimes it's easier for a guy to fall in your lap. Hello, Sam Presti. Because you know yeah. if they'd have had the number one pick, they might have gone after Greg Oden. Instead, they had Kevin Durant and, fall in their And line. not just with the number one pick. Yeah. Hello, Ed Davis. Yes. The Raptors didn't think that he was going to still be on the board, and he essentially fell into their didn't lap. Didn't work out for them or anything. Yeah. And there he was, and you take him and look how it's paid off. So uh, we're not copping out, folks, but it's too early right now to, to with all those variables that Eric talked about to really have a concrete idea of who to pick. There are a lot of guys that have in mind. You can go through and, and start naming them, you know, with – with guys like like Irving and you know Perry Jones, like you can you can name a bunch of guys, but who do you take? Now it depends on where you are and what the other circumstances are. All right, the Raptors tonight. We uh, mentioned it yesterday on Twitter. If you haven't heard already, and you should be following on Twitter, it's free. Twitter.com, Eric Double Underscore Smith, Paul Double Underscore Jones. But you read yesterday, Andrea Bargnani, Jose Calderon not with the team. They didn't even make the trip, so the Raptors are undermanned tonight. 
Jared Bayless back in the starting lineup. I talked to him today. You'll hear that interview, uh, an exclusive one-on-one -on -one with him at yeah. the half tonight, just talking about his role as the point guard. He said to me, hey, there's no doubt that I prefer being in that starting lineup. Who wouldn't? Nothing against Jose. Jose's been a great guy, great teammate, but at the end of the day, I love being able to start and not looking over my shoulder, and clearly I'm going to put up better numbers and produce more in 40 minutes than I do in 20. You know, i got to learn to play both ways and, and adapt to both styles off the bench or as a starter, but at the same time, I want to start and I want to be here long term. So that's something that uh, you can listen into at the half tonight. The last four games, Jared Bayless averaging about 24 points a game as a, well, I wouldn't even say three of them as a starter. One, he came in off the bench and after a slow start against Cleveland, yeah. kind of got it going. Interesting though, we just listened to Doug Collins address the media uh, moments ago and he's afraid of Toronto and people might scoff at that, but he said, you know, I watched Miami at home, a playoff team still fighting for seeding. Uh, get beat by the Milwaukee Bucks, whose season is over. They had no playoffs to play for. Their season is done, but yet they went into Miami and beat them. And he said, I'm really afraid of Toronto in that same vein tonight, undermanned or not, as Eric talked about, Leandro Barbosa and, and Amir Johnson will be game time decisions. But uh, Doug Collins really afraid of Toronto, the athleticism. You forget, folks, Philly started 3-13, and 13, and two of those 13 losses were to Toronto. And, and uh, Doug Collins, with his team having lost three in a row, is quite worried with the injuries and the playoffs coming up. They want this game tonight, and they want to play well. They want to play well going into the playoffs. Well, and just think about you know the Raptors against Chicago and then against Orlando. Now, yeah. we've forgotten about those two because the last two have been absolutely terrible for Toronto. So which team shows up tonight? The hungry team that's looking to you know cause some damage for a playoff team in Philly like Doug Collins talks about, or the team that we've seen the last couple of games uh, especially against, I mean, Cleveland, that, that was, oof, and New York, wow. So we'll see which team actually shows up tonight for the Raptors and if they can uh, kind of get back to where they were about a week ago when they, you know, got in the uh, got in the heads a little bit of the Bulls and then got a big win over the Orlando Magic as well. But that's it for us, right? Yeah, big key is... Going Lou. down, going down. <laughs> the big key is Lou Williams. He's out with a hamstring injury. If Philly gets him back, they could be dangerous. Let him play for the Flyers. Dangerous in the playoffs. Uh, we'll talk to you tonight, 7 o'clock.